What happens when a manufacturer that usually produces entry-level printers tries its hand at a rival product to the current top dog? This is what we see with the Anycubic Cobra 3 in combo with the ACE, the Anycubic Color Engine. Anycubic tries to secure market shares in the lower price segment of printers with filament changers, so currently, primarily, the A1 of Bamboo Lab. Is this a great idea or will it backfire? Sers and hello. I am Jan and today we are taking a look at the Cobra 3 in combination with the ACE unit from Anycubic. The test model for this was provided to me by Geekbuying, who now also have a German store tailored to the German or European market with shipping warehouses in the EU. Below you will also find links to our products. If you buy through these I will receive a small bonus which helps me run this channel. But now for the printer. Its technical data is quite robust and convinces with a print volume of 25 by 25 by 26 cm. This is 6 mm smaller in X and Y than the A1 from Bamboo Labs, but it can go 4 mm higher in Z. According to Anycubic it should be able to do speeds of up to 600 mm per second. However, a realistic speed for good quality are 300 mm per second, similar to the A1. Multicolor printing is possible with the ACE, but more on that later. Like the A1, the printer supports input shaping, vibration compensation, which works quite well in my opinion. A PEI spring steel plate is used in the print bed, which is perfectly adequate. Automatic leveling and adjustment of the set offsets are also on board, like most other printers feature in this price range. The slicer. Anycubic currently offers two slicers for this printer. The Anycubic slicer, which in my opinion is absolute garbage in terms of handling and results. And the Anycubic slicer next, based on Orca. The latter is really ok and delivers top results. Since the last update it's also possible to print via Wi-Fi, with the printer and no longer exclusively via the Anycubic cloud, which I really welcome. The print quality really surprises me. Out of the box the printer gives me no reason to complain at all. I also have nothing to complain about it if you give this video a like and maybe subscribe to my channel. Costs you both nothing at all. Each of the prints I'm showing here were produced using the standard profiles of the Anycubic Slicer next. And without any special calibration. Definitely very user friendly and convincing. The biggest feature of the printer is of course the ACE, the filament exchange unit. It has to be said that it does its job. But it's a little sensitive. At the beginning I often had problems with clogging of various kinds. Why did this happen? I was able to solve most of the problems by making the bow of the Bowden tubes longer so that it is larger above the print bed, which made clogs occur much less frequently. Some filament rolls also cause problems when unrolling, like if they are wider or have a larger diameter, but similar problems are also known with the Bamboo Lab solutions. Overall, the ACE now caused me only a few problems now and then, even compared to my Bumble Labs AMS solutions. What I also like about the ACE is the integrated filament dryer that dries the inserted filament over a definable period of time. However, the printer with the ACE next to it takes up a lot of space on the desk. I've seen YouTubers who place the printer on top of the ACE, but I think this is impractical because you can no longer get to the ACE properly and I fear that the printer will eventually fall off the ACE due to the operations. I also don't like the separate power connection for the ACE, but this is probably due to the filament dryer not being able to be supplied via the printer's power supply unit. It should be said about filament exchange units in general, regardless of any cubic or bumble lab, that they produce a lot of waste. Especially with prints that have several colors on one layer. An extreme example of this is this dragon, which has up to 4 colors in one layer. In total he has carried out at 1250 filament changes, each time using a little filament. In total over half a kilo for this dragon. The additional time required is actually the least of the worries now. Situation is different if, for example, you change the filament on a certain layer, like with those Uforge pictures here. Significantly less filament is used that way. So you have to be very careful and approach filament change wisely. You also have to be aware that the amount of filament waste remains the same regardless of the number of prints on the bed. One of these fidget spinners produces just as much waste as 10 on the bed as the number of filament change remains the same regardless of the number of objects to be printed. 
Two aspects that I absolutely love about the ACE, just like the Bumble Labs AMS, are the fact that loading and unloading filament is extremely easy compared to the single roll printers. And the fact that you can use two identical rolls and as soon as the first one is empty the unit continues with the second one is really great. Short filament leftovers on a roll can be used up completely without any issues. What do I like about it? The price performance ratio is really great. You get a lot of technology for a good price. I find the design of a printer in the ACE very appealing. I think it has a nice industrial style flair. The possibility to drive filament directly in the ACE saves an additional device. On nozzle replacement is quite easy as the front of the print head can be removed easily. Out of the box you get really good printed results with a new Anycubic slicer next. I don't like. The solution with the Bowden tubes and the ACE takes up a lot of space. And the Bowden tubes make it difficult to place the whole thing different than next to each other. If you want to avoid problems with the ACE, the Bowden hoses also have a large arc which means that the space required at the top is also quite large when printing higher models. I also find it rather unfortunate that the ACE needs extra power, but as I said, there is probably no other way to go to a filament dryer. Conclusion My conclusion is that you can't go wrong with a Cobra 3 with the ACE in a bundle for that price. Of course, the Bumble Lab A1 with the AMS is a bit more valuable and sophisticated, but it is also more expensive. What do you think? Which printer would you choose, the inexpensive of any cubic or a bamboo lab? Me for myself, I like both. It probably depends a bit on personal taste, but for now I'm out of here. See ya!